Sub Shooters, my name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to this reviews, where today I have the pleasure of reviewing an album from an actor named Kevin Calhoun, titled Six Train Uptown. And if we switch over to here, we have the album in its entirety, all 10 tracks. I have reviewed music from this person, but that this is the debut under the name Kevin Calhoun. And we're gonna to listen to each of these tracks from start to finish and gonna hear what we think. Let's go, starting with the greatest Kevin Calhoun and Muhammad Ali. Ladies and gentlemen. From Louisville, Kentucky, Mr. Cassius Marcellus Clay. Cool. Great introduction here with these, um... I am the greatest. By Cassius Clay. This is the legend of Cassius Clay. The most beautiful fighter in the world. Before we go any further, I just want to say the production quality is absolutely tight. I love this R&B soulish kind of like um, old school hip hop vibe with the extended harmonies on the keys and stuff and the drum, the, the, the percussion dude, the drum kit is so fresh sounding. You know, you can just loop that eighth note groove for days with the occasional 16th just to kind of keep it fresh. Having Muhammad Ali come in for the intro was a fun thing. I haven't really heard a lot of that before. Um, like having like a celebrity sample or something like that. But if it makes sense with the music and the story, then that's what matters, right? A $40 budget, man, that said the ground was hard, but you know I gotta love it. Funny how I'm becoming the topic of discussion. Any hate my way, man, I simply rise above it. Went from here goes nothing to all this thing is bumping. From turn this mess off to hit that rewind button. From idly watching to doing things I dreamed of. From cleaning the desk to now kicking my feet. Oh yeah, as well, because I think that um, if I'm not mistaken, Kevin's made music for other people before, written for other people before, and this is his debut with him being the sort of the front person, you know, um, the focal point, and I think that's a beautiful thing, you know, it's great to have someone come out of the shadows and do their best with the skills and show people what they've got. I, I like that that's the way that we're starting this debut album. Mike's do I rip on a daily, I'm tall, skinny, and black. Does that make me slim shady? I promise I will spaz on any freshman class to show you that these new rappers aren't built to last. I'll destroy the competition with the words of my composition. May I pray one day that somebody will listen. Now I just seem to garner their attention. Treat them like Stevie, have them wonder about my vision. It goes one for the month. Damn, dude. Tune like Stevie have wonder about my vision. Yeah, it's cool. Because again, that's the thing. Like once you come out into the light, you've got to make sure there's an audience willing to listen to you. And I think the, the, the precision of the way that Kevin raps and how articulate and precise he is within the arrangement, how the other instruments that are sort of supporting him are so... There's such a, there's an openness with the arrangement where like everything's sort of panned to the sides and his vocals in the center stand out a little bit more than they would otherwise, you know? It's that kind of fundamental 101 stuff that like if you screw it up, you really are sort of screwed and Kevin Calhoun is just, it's just nailing it, man. for the show and three for the ones who doubted me from the go. How I feel. I am the greatest. How I feel. I am the greatest. That turntable is in there again with that nice hip hop vibe there um i dig it sampling the i am the greatest thing you know the doubters man they ain't got they ain't got anything to talk about anymore dude you're, you're nailing it just keep it up you know i like that positivity there that um you the impression that the decisions paid off Hits after hits like Bobby Miss Whitney Trying to murder this game Get a feature from Biggie No disrespect I just want to be the best It's all these new rappers That they wasting their breath Cause I love the legends I just want their place Seal my own faith VIP straight to heaven's gate Church And tell the Lord where I'm at I'll be down in the studio Working with Mac Riding shotgun with Nip During his victory lap And doing cyphers with Pun L And all them cats Till then I'll be chilling down here on earth While they flexing online I'll be putting in the work Cause no genie's ever checking for me But if he ever did Here's what my wishes will be It'll be one for the money Nice double tracking of the vocals in this chorus here It adds a little bit more emphasis And uh, on, on the vocals in this part And it forces you to pay attention Especially if you're repeating these lines You need to be in the face You need to be catchy um, yeah, I, I like the allusions to him putting in the work on the ground and everything and, you know, kind of comparing himself, contrasting with the internet rappers of today, the SoundCloud rappers, you know what I mean? Um, not that there isn't talent there, but at the same time, it's also great to hear musicians who are keeping it organic and keeping it anchored. Their musical motif has been repeated, but it never... I 
again, I think splitting it up with that turntable is and when the I am the greatest thing in that baseline, kind of switching things up a little bit alongside the chords, it's uh, a smart move. The guitar work here is gorgeous, you know, that lo-fi vibe here, but it just matches it so elegantly and it's very stylistically cohesive. Two for the show and three for the ones who oh. doubted me from the go. How I feel. I, I, I am the greatest. How I feel. I, I, I am the greatest. Fantastic. When I say two, that's never a third. Betting against me is completely absurd. When Casha says a mouse can outrun a horse, don't ask how. Put your money where your mouse is. <laughs> I am the greatest. Yeah. Because again, Muhammad Ali was just on. Um, he was he was incredible, wasn't he? Um, I I like that. Um, I like that swagger. I like that attitude that we've got towards the music within this album already. You know, we've got someone with flow, creativity with the lyrics. Um, knows how to spit them in a way that's nice and easy to understand. It knows how to also work with what's provided in regards to the instrumentation, ornamentation, and that musical theme there. Sometimes rapping, I think, can work really well with those colorful extended harmonies because it is more of a percussive kind of thing. Especially when we've got these held chords like on the guitar parts within that track. It's a nice contrast in it. Yeah, things stand out and have their own place in the mix. But the greatest, great start, and well done as well for crediting Muhammad Ali in that. I think that was a classy move to make, you know, considering it was a focal point of some of the track. Uh, the come up, track number two. But nice, nice fade out there with the outro there. Oh, piano this time. Interesting filtering there. Do the thumbs, man. It's an interesting kind of stuttery kind of piano idea that we've got here, which is great with those female backing vocals. Don't know if there's a bit of modulation on those or not. And the drums are punchy as, punch as usual. Again, like there's more of this kind of like I am on top of my game stuff. I'm making all these gains and no, but nothing's going to stop me. But it's almost like the way that he's rapping and the way that he's positioning himself and as well as the rest of the elements of the mix and the tracks themselves, it kind of backs it up a little bit, you know? Again, you've got this, um, this, this single here, Secret Lover by Kevin Calhoun with like 100k listens or something like that. That's pretty good. That's some solid attention that we're getting here and i really hope it continues for him you're delaying your demise they say they got bars but they really bite size your top three should include me myself and not i want your top three should include me myself and i that's a clever line that's a clever line i got no complaints about that the wordplay is strong in the this one say, hey what's up man i got knocked down but i got right up man a celebration man go ahead and raise a cup and celebrate for the warrior that's on the come up you know what we on the come up Again, that 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 sun's down, sun's up. You know that that kind of repeater, that very very brief kind of light repeater on the sides there that went from the left to the right. I think that was a nice way to fill in that space. We're aware that we can't just continue to wrap the entire time. That we need to allow a bit of a break just to so there was a palate cleanser, and we include something different there while still reiterating the message there for the come up. It's great. Do what you do. Again, consistency with the musical theme here. It's being repeated, but it's not stale yet, you know? Oh, oh! So we're getting real there for a second. We're talking about what I had, what would happen if we hadn't taken the risk there. I, I think that's clever. I think that's a smart move. Because that's the thing in the music industry, you're you're not owed success, no matter how hard you try. Some people get there just by by sheer luck of like a producer walking through the door or something like that. It's obviously not common, but 
at the same time, if you're like someone like Kevin Cohen who's got their lyrics sorted, the delivery sorted, the you know the story sorted, the you know the the backing track, the accompaniment or the comping sorted, and if the production is up there as well, you've you've got a damn good chance. At Oh, oh yeah, we got real dark there for a minute, yeah. And some, again, some people, no matter how they try, they just get, just get kicked while they're done. It's terrible. It's it's terrible stuff, man. You know, I think people listening to this might find a sense of kindred spirit with Kevin, and that may allow them to resonate with the music, and that may find Kevin's support. If anything, the only way I think you can really succeed as a musician in genres like this is if you have some form of authenticity whatsoever. Because people... People aren't dumb, you know. People aren't dumb. They'll they'll figure it out if you're fronting for the wrong reasons, you know. So I'm glad that Kevin is trying to sort of articulate himself, show a bit of vulnerability here. You know, talking about like being stuck at the supermarket if he didn't take the risk. And they're on the come up now. They're on the they're on the rise, and that's beautiful, you know. I get that that bump bump has a nice tail into that sort of kind of glitchy sequence synth there, you know, it's it's great. For else so I could prevail, came a long way from working on PowerPoint and Excel. Now I put a song out and I wait for the sales. Had to put my home on my back like I was a snail. I'm about to do it big like I come from bed stock, cause I'm so damn dope. I can get you dumb high. Have you tripping overnight like you took a red eye? I'm a harder hip hop. I will never let it die. So I'm living my life just like a hustler. Dreams so close, I'm almost touching them. Even critics want to see what the fuss is about. Turning my haters to my number one customer. First time rap, they said I was horrendous. Now they saying this boy could be tremendous. If I get a bunch of money, I still won't spend it. Who said this the end? I don't see no credits. You know why? We on the come up. Yeah, we on the I like that. We're not only talking about finding success and sort of like the transition and progressing we've made from the start till here, but we're also talking about the fact that even if we do find success, like huge success, we don't we won't stop then. There's just still positive ground to be made. Um it's cool. It's 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 inspiring stuff, really. Grinding every day from sunrise till the sun's done. And what you know about that? Do what you do, put your team on the map. They said I'm liking that we had slightly different angles for each of these three verses. I think that's a smart move, you know? And what you know about that? King of the district put his team on the map. Yes, sir. I like how he's trying to bring other people up with them talking about that. Never give up, man. Great vocal chops there, fantastic. Track number two, I enjoyed it, you know. It's clear to understand what both these tracks are about so far. That comes down not only to the vocal performance and the space of the other parts of the arrangement give as well as the emotional content there. But it's also the production and the quality of the recording and getting that precision there, you know. World is yours, track number three. Get more of that turntablism. Good times, I enjoy it. Hang on, what are we sampling there? Are we sampling something there? Because that reminds me of a track that I heard in like the jazz playlist. Long story behind that. I don't usually listen to jazz, but. Welcome to the land where dreams come true, where everything that you want is inspired by you, where your dreams and goals are completed through grind, and only rules and regulations are made inside your mind. Welcome to the life that you can't resist, where everything in your way, man, doesn't exist, where your idols become your rivals, your haters become your fans. It seems like the world fits perfectly in your hand. Gotta keep going, man. Gotta keep moving. Okay. Gotta keep the same energy, winning or losing. It's a long road when you're trying to strive for greatness. Gotta to keep those sticky fingers because the world is for the taking never been afraid to fall you know i'm about to do it oh you speaking money to me great because i speak it fluent gotta make sure you're paid make sure you paid the way and if they try to stop you make the sure they don't see the light of day. make sure they don't see the light of day damn we got real dark on that part and we not only are we staking our claim on our own success but we are shutting down anybody who wants to mess with that 
I like that intensity. It's fantastic. It's refreshing there. Because we've been pretty friendly up until this point, but we're getting a little bit more assertive in the world is yours. And I like that from the come up, talking about how the world is becoming yours, you know, haters become fans or something like that. You know, it's funny how stuff changes around. Yeah, let's continue, eh? I think that the turntablers and the, the, that that just gives it an extra life there. It's it's uh it's a fun texture that I don't hear enough of nowadays in hip hop and rap, and I wish it would come back. I wish there'd be more of it. I wish it would come back. The world is there for the ones who are ready to embrace it, and not for the ones. You know, like everyone can put 808s and like Metatune and stuff on their vocals, but but bring back some of that old school stuff. And maybe even include it. Like have fusions of both. What the fate is. Opportunity comes, you might just miss her. Looking for water so much, you miss the big picture. Open your eyes and see the world in front of you. Life is a gift, so tell me what you're gonna do. We can split this check, or we can split this L. If you talk about money, then you know I'm gonna excel. And when you hit your goal, go ahead and take it farther. You might miss the moon still covered in stardust. You the flies in the visual we've seen thus far. Need more than a dictionary to find who you are. So shake that body, party that body. Shake that body, party that body. Shake that body. I love this. Kind of like that, put your hands in the air kind of moment, you know? It's nice to have that here. It's almost, I wish we could have like had some other layer here to elevate that just a little bit more, like double track the vocals or something like that. What you do to make sure you live in large is the life that you live in when you are a star. <laughs> We're back to that chorus. Cool. Even though I've just had like the music pause for a second just before we go back into it, you know? Oh no, we're going to a DJ a turntable solo section. Yeah, that was classy though. I like that transition there. It was fun. You know, you may not believe this, but I haven't had a solo section from like a turntablist in like not a single time. And I adore it so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think I've reviewed music from turntablists before, but not where there's like a centric, like focus on that within like a music from like a different genre with like an actual like dedicated like vocalist or something like that, you know? It slaps, man. Okay, you don't need as much of a story. You don't need as much of a story when you've got stuff like this occurring where you can kind of just nod your head and be like, oh, okay, we're focusing more on the other textures that are possible within this, you know. We had the, the scratches instantiated earlier and now we have more of a focus on it. That's kind of cool, you know? It's kind of cool. The world is yours. Great. Oh, there was an 808 in there afterwards. So okay. I'm not gonna I know that 808s aren't from like 2020. Don't get me wrong. I, I know that 808s have been around for a long time. It's just very rare that you don't find like modern hip hop and rap with them without nowadays, you know. With the kind of trappish hi hats and stuff like that. Nice uh, reiteration of that mu musical motif there with those string harmonies in that, that part there at the outro of World Is Yours. We have high beams now, track number four. Okay, I don't know where we're headed. I'm kind of confused. Hang in a minute. Let me just check something real quick. No, it's just low key. It's just low, low. That 808 is quite resonant in the mix, isn't it? Yeah, 
my beams. Yeah, I know they blinding. Windows might be tinted, but you can still see me shining. Stock is slowly rising. Temperature is climbing. I like the different vocal texture we had in the chorus section there. That may or may not have not been Kevin. It sounded slightly different. It was also kind of cool to have like this kind of choir, this kind of weird kind of vocal harmony going on here that's kind of unusual. It kind of sounds really old timish. Again, it's so quick, but the words come through so clearly, and that comes with precision, and that precision comes with experience. You know, it's testament to the production as well because we have these vocals on the side and then we have that really sort of prominent bass and then we have the main rapping in the center and it all sounds reasonably balanced. Oh shit, we're getting real, real, real kind of intense about it, aren't we? I like the development we have going through it though. It almost seems like we've got a funeral song or like we've lost something, you know? It's kind of a really intense musical experience, at least harmonically. See, so when the Lord calls me in, push play and I'll be alive again. I dig it. The guy's immortal, basically, you know? Damn. With my high beams on. Dig it. I dig it, dude. The guy is just, he's pulling. There's no stopping him. He's hoping that you don't crash if you're trying to front against him because there's nothing stopping him, man. He, he is already ahead of the game. I dig it. Like, again, it never comes off as abrasive. There's a clear sort of confidence and swagger to it. But I enjoy as well that it's balanced in regards to, like, it never comes off like he's just being um, rude or anything like that, you know? It's almost like he's stating um, an arguable facts. So in case you're wondering, this my nano leaf panels that I have over here are not behaving themselves. So sorry if there's been wearing them colors occurring halfway through this. Yeah, you can see it. The little kind of white stuff. It's been an absolute pain, man. I'm hoping that it's going to behave itself now, but we will see. But I'm enjoying this album so far, for sure. Probably gonna pause halfway and see if I can fix that nano leaf, but we'll see. I was gonna listen through that last part again one more time. I did it overnight, it couldn't happen any quicker. Damn, dude. Imagine finding overnight success like that. Wouldn't that be fantastic? You have some people that go through their entire lives not knowing what success is, and some people are just able to just smash it overnight. It's fantastic. Dope.
A nice fade out there. We were a fan of those fade outs for the most part, I think. And it's a nice classy way to finish your track, you know? Let the theme kind of go out into the night, bring the next thing in. We've got Secret Lover though, track um, number five at 127k listens. So this is quite a popular one, you know? So this seems like quite a bit louder than high beams. And I'm not sure if that's a deliberate thing or not. Okay, this slaps, dude. This this slaps. This slaps like hardcore, dude. I, I cannot get enough of this track. I understand why it's popular. I love the synth melody there and the call and response, dude. It's so dope. But she traded all the way just so she could be famous. I'm talking red carpet, you know, rocking latest media ticket pics because they know what her name is. She loving the camera, she be striking a pose at night. She be crying with the drug up her nose, and then she and now she be crying with a drug up her nose. Damn, dude, that's visceral, visceral imagery, man. We need to keep her composed because we have a lot of love that we need to dispose. She got them angel eyes with a devilish grin, and in the darkness, I see the shine within. Makes me want to know if this is genuine. We might be in love, but we have to pretend. Management says it just can't be him. Only a list celebrities look up for the brand. Anything to increase the sales. That's why she runs to me to save her from her hell. Oh, damn. So this is about like someone who can't admit that they're in love with you and does it behind the scenes because it wouldn't look good for their brand or something like that. Great flow. Again, it's quicker. That's got a faster tempo. One, two, three, four. But Kevin's keeping up. There's some 8th and 16th note rhythms going on with that verbal passage. And um, yeah, it's nice coloration with those clean parts as well. Great, great break there. Got those 80s kind of tom fills and stuff. Production's tight, dude. Yeah. I stay turned up, she stays turned up. The only bad thing by the star is a burn up. I stay turned up, she stays turned up. The only bad thing by the star is a burn up. She be doing things just to stay alive. Buying everything on Rodeo Drive. The only thing that I can provide is my love and my loyalty deep inside. So even in the crowd. I love my lower to deep inside. So they're not compatible in the end. Dude, this driving force, it kind of makes you feel like you're going through some kind of like, um, oh, it's got that kind of cyberpunk neo sort of vibe to it. I, I, I dig it. I, I love the futuristic kind of uh, tonalities that we've got within this with these really bright sounding synths and that quarter note groove on the drums. Almost got an electric, electro house kind of feel to it. Our love is in the air, I know you feel it too. They captured the lies, but I know the truth. You want to get out of here and do what love is due. Because you're a goddess, you need to be worshipped. I'm drowning in your love and I won't resurface. Don't be secure because you're always perfect. They all want your secret, I'm the one that deserves it. They all want your secret, I'm the one that deserves it. Damn, I Again, the word play is strong. Guys, you can, you can tell this guy's done sort of ghost writing, you know? Again, I'm so glad that Kevin is getting the opportunity to release his own material under his own name. It's what I think is, is fair, you know? Yeah, I feel like he's done the hard yards now. It's his time to shine, you know? And the clean vocals in this part are absolutely sensational. I haven't really spoken much about the clean vocals I've heard throughout this album, but I will be honest with you and say, I, I want more like this, please. I would like more of what's already out there in regards to these really beautiful, but but not necessarily like meta-tuned. And I, I don't have an issue with like auto-tune and stuff. What I mean is I just want to have like really talented, clean sort of vocalists who do the legato ornamentation um, stuff and the trills. But I also want to have people who are fantastic rappers and I want them to work together. 
uh, sadly, sometimes when when I listen to songs, I'll either you'll either have one or the other. Either the rapping will be really good and the singing's kind of you know it's 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 okay, or, or the rapping is kind and the singing's fantastic. I like I like more of both to be good, please, because I feel like that's the sweet spot, you know. Nice uh, bass response on that opening kick. Kind of got a weekend vibe, you know? Kind of, kind of got a the weekend vibe to it. Nice call and response between his guitars and synth parts. And that punchy bass as well, dude. That that bass just cuts through the mix, man. Really well mixed. Um, it sounded very, 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 very loud. It sounded like we were really pushing that limiting meter, man. It, <laughs> there was a bit of a, I could hear a little bit of distortion in this occasionally because we were going real hot on some of those channels, but it was nice and loud. And I think people generally these days, they want the music they're listening to to be nice and loud. And that's often what gets the attention uh, because to a lot of listeners, as I understand it, loudness is quality because if it's quiet it's obviously not as good right i mean that's not how i see it personally but that's how a lot of people see it although it's worth noting as well just before i take a little break you know you don't necessarily need for your track to be every track to be super loud spotify and other digital streaming platforms they have like limits of negative 14 lufs or lufs uh you you can't go beyond that without spotify attempting to normalize your music and potentially ruin its dynamic range so it's just stuff to think about you know but again i'm happy with this first half of the album so far i'm not sure why high beams was a lot quieter than secret lover or vice versa maybe secret lover was louder than the rest of them i'm not sure but i mean aside from that little part there i'm just like i'm, I'm wondering a little bit what's up with that everything else so far has been utterly fantastic and i've enjoyed my time and i'll be back soon uh second half see, see you then and we're back we're back to review the last half of this album um i really enjoyed the first half of it so far looking forward to hearing what we have next this is a six minute track here um yeah for life i hate songs like these let's go hang on was that right so let me just start from the from the start okay Interesting progression with these chords and these phasey synths. Give me something retro, maybe little techno. Mr. Robot's the way I'm going to hit the lotto. So bring me drinks pronto, we ain't promised for tomorrow. I'll take a bottle hand and still have some more Moscato. So who's wrong? Who's right? I like it. I like how it almost doesn't sound like their musical motif is starting and ending. It kind of loops endlessly within to itself, which kind of allows you the, you know, the privilege at any point when you're uh, writing something like this to just insert a chorus wherever you feel it needs to go. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Who cares? All right, man, they do this thing one night. Man, we doing this for life. Who's wrong? Who's right? Who cares? All right, man, they do this thing one night. Man, we doing this for life. For life. For life. Best to leave us right. Gotta keep it going till you see the sunlight. Whatever's in this cup and whatever's in this blunt. Cause the combination in me got a brother feeling stuck. So her body it's a great story so far but i also want to talk about the musicality of the different instruments like that there's a really nice round bass in there um that kick there is stunning sometimes you get a lot of clicky kick clicks clicky kicks in rap and hip hop but having this round or kind of smooth one kind of works really well with the uh the longer tails on those synth pad bits on us, huh? I paid you. So I fell in love. She said she wanted to chill, so she took another pill. She may not love me, but she loves how I feel. So we took another sip. Best believe we lit. She got a lot of baggage, but you know I'm bound to trip. So we up in this place. Cracked another case. I'm drinking champagne like I won first place. So go and say my name. It, it kind of, because the story is interesting, you had development of that thematically, it almost allows for you to sort of repeat that musical theme as many times as you need to. You know, we don't necessarily need a lot of change in the instrumental section if the story is engaging. 
It almost sort of becomes through composed, you know? I might be in the crowd, but I'm just one of a kind. Have you ever seen a guy so fresh and so clean? Man, have another shot. Man, welcome to the team. Who's wrong? Who's right? Nice. I'm really glad though that we kind of emptied out that high to mid section here, had that low resonance, you know, because again, Kevin is in that mid range there. So having that space there up top just allows the vocals to be a bit more sort of prescient in this part. Right, man, they do this thing one night, man, we doing this for life. Who's wrong? Who's right? Ah, that's why it's sounding kind of cool. It's it's a kick that's tuned to the key signature of the song. That's clever. I think it's an E flat or something right, like that. Man, they do this thing one night, man, we doing this for life. So who's wrong? Who's right? Who cares? All right, man, they do this thing one night, man, we doing this for life. So who's wrong? Who's right? Who cares? All right, man, they do this thing one night, man, we doing this for life. For life, for life, best believe it's right. You know, we got that for life, for life hook line being repeated there. Um, a mildly emphatic uh, accompaniment going on here. It's kind of eerie and cloudy. It sort of sounds like you're partying. They've talked about like popping pills and like the drinks and having a good time to party and just having enjoying how each other's feeling. And it kind of does kind of remind me um, like of the oral aesthetics of like parties and nightlife and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Kind of eerie and atmospheric, you know? When atmospheric is the default, right? But what I mean is like, it's so like hazy, like you're kind of tipsy, you know what I mean? I'm looking in the mirror and my eyes are bloodshot. So go and get my shades. I never look so paid. Another shot tequila and I might fade away. Man, she's starting to roll with me. She be getting frisky. I might roll too. Just give me some that sticky. Or maybe some that powder. Either way, I'm here for hours. Your boy is so high. I just pass the Eiffel Tower. Cause I'm headed to the stars. Maybe even Mars. Shotgun this beer. Ride a shotgun in the car. There are no limitations to your imagination. When you live in this life what the hell is moderation so you got another box just just for full disclosure i don't think i've like reviewed a rap or a hip-hop track that's six minutes before this is an achievement and i mean that genuinely um it'll be interesting to see how we hold it for that six minutes already like we're thoroughly familiar with the musical theme there and we've had the chorus, we've had the hook. So it'll be cool to see where we go, whether we go to like another section entirely, like whether it's split in half or something like that. We'll see how it goes. Might as well face it, cause if you die lit, they consider you the greatest. Man, I'm starting to lose my patience. Man, I can't see at all. Man, I'm about to black out. So I snore some matter raw. So I'm headed to the keg. Voices in my head. They say I need to chill, but I sleep when I'm dead. So I'm about to take flight. It's been a hell of a night. I'm about to crash and burn. It's been a hell of a life. So who's wrong? Who's right? Who cares? All right, man, they do this. It's getting a bit darker, isn't it? When we're talking about just wanting to burn out or, you know, like that self-sacrifice just for the moment, you know? Night, man, I'm doing this for life. So who's wrong? Who's right? Who cares? All right, man, they do this thing one night. Man, we doing this for life. For life. For life. For life. For life. Did I not call it? Did I totally not call that would switch things up halfway? Yeah, good. Thank you. I just, I don't think we could have carried that theme for six minutes unless we had some drastic change shift or something like that, or unless we added another sort of texture in the uh, in the composition to to maybe repeat that motif, but just freshen it up a little bit, you know? Believe, 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 believe. In New York, I'm really rock. Hide it in my sock, enough of all that talk, feel like throwing up, she's sitting next to me, she really can't believe, her breakfast about to be, orange juice and plan B, man it hurts when I think. Rep is about to be orange juice and plan B, damn man, that's visceral, that's rough, I like how I've got more of a low key, down to earth kind of groove to this, it's, it's, uh, yeah again, we're talking about after the high, you know? Oh, if I take a sip, I know the true meaning of champagne. Man, I feel slumped over, world on my shoulders, falling off my balcony, really hung over. Man, this life ain't what it seems. I cannot believe that I almost lost my life to Hennessy and weed. Man, the sun is shining on me, and reality is heavy. When you're crashing back to earth, and you're never truly ready for the impact had enough. Throwing out these cups, I feel like my body's on the verge of giving up. Man, I wish it was a dream. Yeah, we're really we're really getting deep into that whole. Yeah, no, we've got we've risen up, but now we have to prepare for the fall. A eh? um, 
I, I like this. I like the way that this long form track has been arranged. Having a two parter is good. What it did to me, I don't hear no music, just a dripping up by me. So great, never... great production as well with those automated vocal takes on left and right. It sort of sounds like the voice is in your head, all the mistiness, and so trying to make sense of the situation there. Things can get sort of messed up when you take the wrong stuff, you know? So worthless, want to know if it was worth it Cause I see the look of CERN on the doctors and the nurses Man, they said I was doing 80s when I crashed into Mercedes When the cops went up about me, I was alone on the pavement I didn't know what my name is or what I was even saying They said I was in the J's and my car went up in flames There was blood everywhere, I went to intensive care Man, I probably would have died if the medics weren't there So I was wrong, alright, about to lose my life Man, they beat on my chest don't go to the light gotta keep my eyes open but i'm starting to lose focus because i think the drugs and alcohol is shutting down my colon so i'm coughing i'm wheezing the doctors are freaking the monitor stop beating am i even breathing i'm dying on the weekend i feel so defeated they doing this for life i guess they mean it so the other day i was speaking to an a and r he got a hold of my music told me that my music wasn't worth pushing so i asked him was it bad he told me that it's not what he's looking for he wants another young thug a playboy cardi a travis scott type so i asked him again was my music bad he said it wasn't sellable so i made this song he came across it he wanted to sign me right then and there but the sad thing about it is i really hate songs like this damn yeah i get it i get it sometimes the most important songs you'll write are ones which you'll eventually regret ever releasing you know like i mean i know it's completely outside the genre we're talking about but i'm still at my led zeppelin right huge huge song really really popular famous song robert plant hates it robin Pl robert plant hated performing it because that's all the crowd wanted was still to heaven and they have this massive discography and people would just be wanting led zeppelin and it would drive robert plant nuts i get it like if you sign yourself to a record label and they want you to produce stuff like this but you're not passionate about it but then that's the way you get paid you know what do you do I mean, this sounds like a really visceral take on his experience there, you know, it's speeding and ending up in like a blaze. And I liked the discord between what we had with the first section, which was all dreamy and sort of like hey, that party aesthetic where everyone was on a good high and riding on clouds. And then that second part where things were a little bit more percussive and matter of fact, as if we were in the conclusion or the end game or something, and we were looking at it in retrospect with a bit more clarity, you know. I think that this is a really well-written song and Kevin ought to be proud of himself for this. This is probably my favorite song that I've listened to tonight. I look forward to hearing more from him in future. I really hope he, even if he doesn't like making that kind of stuff, I hope occasionally he slips in a longer form track like this, just, just so we get a bit of a shake up. I mean, I liked the greatest and the come up and everything like that, but this for life thing is a completely different angle that I thoroughly enjoy. Even if it's maybe less uncomfortable, less comfortable for him to put out there, you know? Yep, and they, the, the two different motifs we had in that track as well were both catchy. They both suited the different moods and thematic preferences of the parts they were instantiated in. You know, being an, an overall A-B kind of structure there, it was well written and it thoroughly justified the six minutes. So I'm very happy with that. I want it all, track number seven. Oh, well, this is that kind of future neo... What is this? I want it all. Man, the flow's outstanding. It's so fresh. It's got those extended harmonies there, some seventh and ninth chords, and it's it, these jazzy influences that I'm hearing within this are fun. It's almost lo fi ish, but it's got that 90s vibe to it as well. And it's just so pristine. Man, you can't understand it. I want it all. There's a little bit of vinyl sizzle in there as well.
I see no better all on me than stack chips like Pringles. Hit the jackpot, watch it all be mine. Wipe my credit card, man, it won't be declined. It's about damn time I got my nickels and dimes. I've been chasing waterfalls since the days of left eye. Now I'm swimming in this trust. Winning is a must. You can okay, I like this chord progression got here with a bum 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 melodic passage there. The approach to it with those those um legato parts is great. A little bit of a little bit of a um, grace note going on occasionally. There, it's very classy, and the held notes contrast well with the shorter sections. Cool eighth note groove on the drums as well. It's nice to hear someone be honest about the fact that they want it all and don't want to make compromises. I do think that this track, some of these tracks are quieter than others, and I I could be tripping, but it would be probably be worth having a look through a loudness meter for each of these and just confirming that. I know Secret Lover was noticeably louder, at least perceived loudness was bigger than, than high beams, you know. I think this is a great palette cleanser in regards to the themes and the emotions and feelings and all that presented. It's nice to have this after for life, although to be honest, I suppose maybe Secret Lover went into for life chronologically. You know, I think they were talking in Secret Lover about someone who like couldn't have their relationship public and they had to date in secret. And then maybe for love, life is when they finally get together, but it all bursts into flames. And now one it all is, yeah, I get that there were downsides, but I want to have it all. I have these dreams and ambitions, you know? These, I want it all. You know, that's a great transitory device between the end of that verse, like the fourth beat of that verse. Yeah, the fourth beat of the verse going into the first of the chorus with those 16th notes. And they're doing it for each time of this with the hook line. What is that? What is that? What is that line that he's doing there? Where is that being sampled from? There is a particular song and it starts like that. I, I don't know. Is it the rock star by Nickelback or something like that? I could be wrong. Feel free to completely eviscerate me if that's the case. I'm wondering if that's it. It could be, but that's kind of cool that we're putting it in here. Like thematically, lyrically, that makes a lot of sense with the story that we're told in here so far. It's a fun little Easter egg in here. At least the first half of it might be. Man, the flow's outstanding. I want it all. Man, you can't understand it. I want it all. Not Is there like a ping pong delay on those hi-hats? That's an interesting choice. It's a nice way of shaking up the sound of the percussion for this final bit. But I will use his brains to take over the planet. I want it all. Man, the flow's outstanding. I want it all. Man, you can't understand it. I want it all. Not dealing with rats, but I will use his brains to take over the planet. Is there like another string section, like a guitar or something joining up with that, or is the bass syncing up with it? It's nice to have that unison with the notes there. Um, I want it all. I'm gonna have that so I'm gonna have that hook line stuck in my head, dude. It's a catchy way of approaching that line. And it's nice to have the call and response with the elaboration and stuff like that between it. Um, repetition is good, as long as the music is interesting and as long as the message makes sense and is not inherently interesting, you know, not inherently irritating on its own accord. 
it's kind of crazy how quickly we've gone through this album to be honest and i know this is actually a longer review for me i'm um, even though the album is 37 minutes i've i've had talked about a lot of stuff and i'm going to obviously edit it down so that it's not as talky talky but it's okay oh nice slow down with the records at the end man great there great great choice it's the little things that make it special you know we could add a fade out there but it was nice to have that you know i mean you heard it <laughs> you heard it anyways we got caged bird number eight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, distorted yeah, guitar yeah, yeah. i never know what to say in these intros man he did pretty good for not knowing what he wanted to put in the intro there he definitely filled it up yeah i think that you kind of need to have vocals occasionally especially in a, genres of music like this in the in the start because you're i the, the, the hip-hop rap focuses purely on the, the vocalist a lot of the time you know that's the beauty of rap music is that you're you've got a rapper in there and i know that may seem like an obvious thing um, there's other genres of music where you can sort of take away from the vocalist a little bit, but rap is not one of those ones. You really need to have someone on the mic a lot of the time to make it worthwhile, especially when you've got like, uh, you know, when you've got time poorness from the listeners that you have and they don't have a lot of time, they need to hear you pretty soon after the, the beat drops, you know? Uh, a caged bird just waiting to be free, so I absorb the sound that just keeps me round doing my thing. Really smooth bass line there. Nice um, vibrato on that, like Hammond or something like that. Or it could be like a... I wonder if that is a, is a, is a Hammond organ or something like that. The wah, 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 wah. I live for glory, going for what's mine. You know I'm so divine. The way I flip these records like rapping on the beast side. Wale, Kendrick, J. Cole, Jigga, and Nas. Cause some of the greats that I recognize. I'm busting out this cage and I'm ready to fly. Going straight to the legends where I can be... Again, like I could very easily not like nod my head to the beat and I'm not doing it as a conscious thing. If you've got an accent and emphasis on on like the quarter notes, for example, you're going to go one, two, three, four. It's why the placement of the notes in your arrangement is very important. If everything is the same loudness, it's difficult to figure out where the groove is. Besides, no more being a prey when I step in the booth. Man, my confidence is up because my pen is the truth. Used to walk the streets trying to find a good beat. Man, I was so damn mad, didn't sound like Jay-Z. But now I walk around and I'm happy to be. Cause it sounds a lot better when I sound like me. So come with me. And tell me what you see. Do you think that these rappers out here better than me? Do you think you're about that life? I'm here trying to make things right. So I'm talking like come with me. I like the fact that he's talking about being caged and not being able to express himself, and now this entire album has practically been him able to do that. I like the fact that we've got caged bird at this bit. After, especially after Four Life, which was a, a, a massive privilege, to be honest, to be able to hear more about Kevin like that. It's not an easy thing to admit that stuff, but um, you know, Kevin nailed it. And to have caged bird here is a nice point in the album to 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 reiterate something quite important which is this is his debut album this is his debut record under this type moniker and um that this is him trying to do his own thing if Paco's still alive what do you think he will say do happy these guys do y'all think y'all about that life i'm here trying to make things right uh i'm not a killer but don't push me revenge is like the sweetest joy next again well i'm not much of a liar so i'll leave that ball to you because you fabricating your life is what you tend to do oh you are drug dealing now now tell me what you do the only thing you stretch over here is the truth the only thing oh snap the only thing you stretch over here is the truth dude land down those bards land those truth bombs down dude ba 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 bum 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 it's a fun guitar riff here it's nice to have the drums and the bass so supportive of it. You don't need too many key melodies and, and motifs like this, especially where the vocals are again the focal point. But having something like that just to turn things around a little bit is always a plus. Is there a Mellotron in there? Like the... That very kind of faint layer I can hear there. You may not be an actor, but... 
but you definitely like to play a lot. Never had a hit song, but always keep saying you're hot. It's always so funny, especially when they try. And then you Scooby Doo them and you pull off their disguise. It's not who you are, it's not who you is. It's all smoke and mirrors, especially in this biz. That's why I keep it moving with me and my friends. Because when it comes to being real, I'm as real as it gets. Come with me. And tell me what you see. Do you think that these rappers out here better than me? I suppose it'd be a whole lot less exhausting trying to be just being yourself as opposed to trying to be someone else. I can't imagine what it would be like for someone who built up a career as being someone completely different. It would be so incredibly exhausting. I, I'm getting tired just thinking about it. You know? It's great that Kevin is trying to be authentic with the listener. No idea, man. Like, I'm here trying to make things right. It would be interesting to see how, you know, musicians like Tupac would feel about, you know, rap and hip hop in this day and age. I, th I think it'd be quite, quite an adventure for them, to be honest, if they could see it now, because it would have been interesting to hear what they thought. We got that 16th note groove on the drums or the 8th note groove with the 16th kicks. And that fade out, that classy fade out. It's interesting. I wonder how we decide when to do the kind of the slowdown of the tempo sort of fader on the LP player, and when we just decide to automate those volumes. I don't, I don't know how we make those decisions, but I've been pretty happy with it so far for the most part. You know, um, we got Destiny though, track number nine after Cage Bird. Again, like I've gotten the sto story straight from each of these tracks. It's testament to the production, but also the vocalist's performance here and and the music is typically neutral enough to sort of be able to allow for flexibility with you know it, we can either do some wordplay and make it nuanced or we can just be blunt about it both both work in here and i'm glad that we don't just do it one way or the other oh ba -ba -ba -bong. What's up, everybody? vocal chops Oh, we had this vocal filtering at the start of the previous track as well, didn't we? What I like about songs like this is that when you don't have the songs compressed to high hell and when there is dynamic range between the loud and the quiet bits in the mix, you can chase after those little sub layers and actually get sucked into the music. You don't just have to have everything the same loudness because then it's all blunt force in your face, you know? That's not very pleasant a lot of the time, you know? Let's go. Take you back to an era where things were so heavy and everything was so shiny, like the wheels on the Chevy. Talking about the 90s where you could find me when I'm chilling at home, fresh prints on my screen. I was a good kid just watching The Simpsons while a certain politician was getting head up in his kitchen with the. <laughs> I live in New Zealand and I know what we're referencing there. Like MJ on the dunk and Biggie talking about how he be living for the funk every Saturday morning, man. That we gotta chill, playing ready or not for Miss Lauren Hill. Everybody in the house wanna be a kid and play. Mama told us go outside. Today was a good day. Man, I'm telling you about my story. I see. I saw I, I know that reference. It's very beautiful. It makes me nostalgic for for an experience I didn't have. And I think that's kind of a really powerful device there. You know, when a musician can use the arrangement and the comping behind them with along with the story and the way they deliver it in, and, and they are showing nostalgia sometimes we can subconsciously relate to it and that's when you know you have a really really incredible song it's not really a fable remember those raps i used to do at the kitchen table now i write raps for these artists on the label and nothing gets approved unless it gets my say so let me tell you who i be always bringing the heat knew it was gonna happen just had to wait and see i swear to god it was meant to be you know that's right i swear to god it was meant to be you know that's right i remember long days never got paid on my way out and i did it my way I swear to god it was meant to be you know that's right i swear to god it was meant to be you know that's right yeah back in the car yeah no i'm tripping man this is mixed flawlessly it sounds incredible i you know i could just be having a, a dull moment you know where my brain is like processing the different songs differently this is this is gorgeous. The production on it is, is scintillating. I cannot fault this one at all. It was me and Spike G. We were 
it's nice and loud, all the different elements are clear, the automation is fun and interesting in the background, what it was like in the chorus. I like how we're talking about him back in the day and then like the position he's in now and it's like his destiny to be able to head towards where he wanted to be when he was younger. I like the fact that he went through that journey and he got to where he wants to be for the most part, you know? Always bring in the heat. It's kind of beautiful. Well done. Well done. I swear to God, it was meant to be. You know that's right. I swear to God, it was meant to be. You know that's right. I remember long days. Never got paid. Found a way out and I did it my way. I swear to God, it was meant to be. You know really interesting bass line. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, it's these little nuances there. These little additional bits of flair and, and funk and uh, effort. That do not go unnoticed. That's right. I swear to God, it was meant to be. You know that's right. Boom, 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 da, da, boom, da, boom, da, ba, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, boom, ba, 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 boom, ba, boom, ba, ba. You see that bass, like that drum line, that 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 loop there is. It just carries it so well. And I don't really think you need more than that. Like often a lot of different genres of music, you need the drums to do more. Like you might have drum fills or something like that, or you might have bits where it's just the hi-hats or just the kicks or whatever, you know, but you really don't need more for this kind of music. And if you've got that really solid groove there, if you've got that flow going, the percussiveness of the vocals sinks in with the percussiveness of the drums, obviously. And then you just got to add some harmonic textures and melodic textures in there for a bit of coloration and boom, you got yourself a slammer, man. Uh, it's been a great album. It's been a great album. We just got Dreams left. Last one for tonight. It's been a it's been an interesting journey, yeah. I plan to celebrate. I plan to celebrate and scream and pop champagne every chance I get. Because I'm at the Grammys, baby. Just before we continue, I love how euphoric and upbeat this track is. It harkens back and references the Muhammad Ali thing I think we had in the earlier parts. And that journey that was described throughout the entire album is kind of helping you to understand and appreciate the position that Kevin Calhoun is in. And I, I, do, I dig it, man. Cool break there. Again, it's kind of disconcerting a little bit if you haven't really, if you're not really used to that texture, but it's nice to have the drum circle, nice to have those background vocals circle around the headphones. There's a little bit of a break between what we had, you know. That's actually a fair statement, you know, if you have gotten through his album like this, I suppose you are a fan, you know, and even though like I, I've done a lot of these reviews, I typically am a fan of what I listen to primarily because I can appreciate what's going on and I enjoy the music. You know, if you enjoy music, you're probably, actually, you know, it's tricky because sometimes the music can be great, but the actual person who made the music cannot be great. Uh, we'll save that conversation for another time, you know? But just to clarify, I, I think Kevin's cool. I don't have an issue with Kevin. So do the 
police. There's no drugs in my capris. Unless you mean my CD, that's the only dope you'll see. Unless you mean my CDs, that's the only dope you'll see. Damn, man. Bars for days, dude. I totally can see why he was writing writing rhymes for other rappers, you know. He's got a way with words, hasn't he? I suppose that's maybe the benef one of the benefits of doing what he's done, where he's had a lot of practice writing for other people, and now he gets to use all that skill, technique, and polish for his own means. And again, I wish him the best, you know? This girl is a freak and I ain't talking about Giannis, but she's quick to the ring, more faster than Sonic. And I would have gave her one if I had to be honest, but she wasn't messing with me to the day I made a profit. So watch your boy win, I'm about to go in. Man, label so mad that they passed over him. I keep moving forward with this winning mentality. No more chasing dreams because my dreams are my reality. Mama, I made... No more chasing dreams because my dreams are my reality. That's a great way to finish an album. It's to go through the journey you've had, the trials, the difficulties, but to come out on top. That allusion to Muhammad Ali makes sense. You know, Kevin's at the top of his game. Let that continue. Daddy, I made it. Look at your boy, you see he's the greatest. No sleep for me, homie. These dreams are my reality. No sleep for me, homie. These dreams are my reality. Mama, I made it. Daddy, I made it. Look at your boy, you see he's yeah, no, I've got no complaints about this album so far. My dreams are my reality. Mama, I made it. You know, looked calling out to his parents, saying, you know, people are, I'm sure there are people that are proud of what Kevin's managed to accomplish. Again, it's worth noting making an album is really hard. You can't just do it. It requires a lot of different moving parts, especially if you've got other people involved. But if you're doing it in the way that Kevin has, where he's like the main focal point, it's even harder. But Kevin's done it. He's made this album, Six Train Uptown. And for the vast majority of it, I'm very, very happy with it. There's maybe one or two things I've mentioned throughout, but like, for the most part, I'm really stoked with it, you know? No, no complaints about it, really. Like, in regards to, you know, it's just such a nice way to finish the, the album is to have this really upbeat track talking about, look, I made it, my dream is my reality. And Six Train Uptown, it's like he took the train to success, right? Because this is the conclusion. This is the conclusion for my review of Kevin Calhoun's or Calhoun's uh, Six Train Uptown, the album. So let's talk about this album whilst I wait for my camera batteries to charge because I was really dumb, right? And I did just I did an interview um, earlier today and forgot to charge my spare battery. Uh, and, and my other battery was... Yeah, it's a long story. <laughs> this album is a debut album, as I understand it, from Kevin Calhoun. It's a great first impression. It showcases the journey that... Kevin's had as a musician, as an artist over his life. I think it was especially important to go back to Destiny to hear how he was and where he's come from. Songs like For Life, I Hate, songs like these were great because it allowed us to show some, see some vulnerability or some of the less desirable parts of his life or the less, less, you know, some of his least favorite things to maybe talk about, you know? As it can be difficult to go over experiences like that, and I, I liked when we talked about the story about how the record label exec was like, oh, it's sellable now that we've found a song like this, you know. This other stuff might not be sellable according to the record label exec, but the one where he goes through his most, maybe one of his most traumatic experiences is the part that'll sell, you know, sell. It, it's just it's just one of those things, you know. It's just that kind of like, oh, the Murphy's Law, the one time, you know, you've got something that they want is the one time you maybe don't want to explore it too much further. But I think that it's great that Kevin showed some vulnerability there whilst also exhibiting his skill, as well as talking about the fact that he is doing well and he's succeeding. It's, you've got to have balance in, in an album. You've got to have tonal balance. You, if, you, if you come across as too abrasive or too arrogant, and I, I know that we're talking about rap and hip hop here, or a lot of, there's a lot of bravado and swagger to it, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? There's nothing wrong with being proud of yourself and who you are and what you've managed to accomplish. There comes a point sometimes when I do reviews where the, the, the effort or the result of their work does not necessarily support 
what they're saying about their work being the greatest and stuff like that. I think if Kevin keeps going, he's going to be something really special, you know. I think the stories here, you know, I can look at the titles like The Come Up, World Is Yours, High Beams, Secret Lover, and I know what those songs are about by looking at them because each of them had their own story. And we've talked about the stories within the review, but they are easy to follow and understand. And it's just so cool that we didn't skip the basics of music being a communication device, a way of expressing yourself. It needs to teach people stuff. It needs to tell people things. It needs to make people feel things. And that's the core facets which were completed throughout this album, as, as far as I'm concerned. So the stories were compelling. We discussed them. For the, I know I've said this before, but we discussed them as we went through, so I won't talk about it too much right now. But it was great to hear all these different sides of Kevin and to be enlightened by it. The, the actual vocal performances here, the rapping was sensational. The, the implementation was precise. We were quick when we needed to be. We had a calm, collected groove to it most of the time rolling with those eighths and sixteenths. So there was occasions where we sort of had these backing vocals or something like that, or where we had uh, points where it was more sort of like, um, there was some clean vocals and there were some other vocal chops from like lady vocalists and stuff like that. Uh, and there was some clean, I think there were some clean male vocals as well. There, there was a lot to appreciate in that vocal section, which again is a focal point of rap and hip hop that I think we just smashed it, we, we nailed it. I don't think we necessarily needed to change anything with the rapping part of it and, and the vocals matched the story well at least with the way they were they were done you know the emotional content made a lot of sense again for a song like for life i had songs like these it was great to have those two sides of it i think it's a very important track to have in this album it showcases the duality of his approach to music and it was a smart move i i think it would have been less effective as an album if we did not include that it just had that little bit of extra to it it, 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 it's, it's the, yeah, it stood out for me as a unique sort of uh, experience among this. That doesn't necessarily mean I think it's a better song, and that's also part of the reason why I don't do like review scores or any of that kind of stuff, because how are you, numbers are stupid. Numbers are really, really dumb. You know, you could give something a better number just because you're in a better mood that day, right? Kevin seemed to really care about what he was talking about within these tracks. He chose the right ways of doing the vocals for the different elements of it, and I've not got no complaints about that whatsoever. And the words came through clearly. And again, the storytelling, the wordplay, the sense of humor at times, but also the seriousness of other points was very appropriate and very intelligent. And I enjoyed it. The, the songs had a familiar kind of contemporary verse, chorus, verse, chorus structure to them. Sometimes we repeated hot sessions, you know. Sometimes we had more of a through composed thing like For Life, uh, where of course we had the two sections and maybe we had a hook line there, but it was more of a long form experience, which I think made sense because we couldn't have really halved that song. We needed it to be a whole listen, you know? And the transition between the two was so smooth. We had elements of the first motif in there, but done on different instruments with different textures. It had its own unique sort of attributes and style to it, and it made stand out individually, you know? The instruments we had so many instruments in here dude we like had string sections bass piano drums guitar parts um turntablism we we had some scratching in there as well dude there was so much to appreciate i thoroughly recommend going through this album counting the instruments within it and seeing if you like all of them because i couldn't really hear anything that was out of place again the production on a strong and the arrangement of the songwriting was 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 great we kept things minimalist when we needed to have a focus on the vocals or when we didn't really need to necessarily communicate a complexity of the situation. But like with, again, I know I keep talking about For Life, but also like Destiny and Cage Bird, there was sort of a complex nostalgia there sometimes or like a sense of loss. And and, and it, you had to be careful with the way you communicated the emotional parts of it. So you needed to include some extended harmonies or some chords that weren't necessarily typical triads. You know, the percussion for the most part was nice and consistent. You had occasional extra kick bits or the occasional fill, but for the most part, it was more about the groove being set and maintaining that. The bass lines were interesting. Sometimes they were very minimalist and rang with the root notes. Other times you had a bit of experimentation going up the fretboard with some of the electric bass recorded parts, but everything sort of harmonized well. Piano parts and string parts as well, they were great additional harmonies. And, and the synth parts as well, we had some really cute, pretty synth parts. Uh, and some bits that sort of sounded eerie or clear, or a little more ominous, you know. Although there was never really any tracks within this where it became sort of sad and overbearing and oppressive. There was always a sense of a balance in it, and it was more a sense of maturity than anything else. It felt like a very mature album, like, Kevin is well into his own, he knows his own style, he doesn't need to get any cheap reactions by cutting at you with the music. It's more like just meant to be like something you can kind of be a part of, sit in, 
hear him out, and then sort of like decide whether or not you still want to be a fan of him. And to be honest, I, I'm a fan of his work. I, I feel like if he was to continue making music like this, it'd be great. The only concern I have, and this will be the last I mention of it, primarily because it is the conclusion, but also just because I know I've been a bit of a broken record about it. In regards to the recording, mixing, mastering, it just sounds like there were some songs in here which were quieter than others. And I don't know why that is. I'd have to listen to it more. I'm sure that if Kevin sees this, and if I'm wrong, he will let me know. It's not that I think that the quieter parts is bad or anything like that. I don't think that music is bad if it's quieter. Sometimes you want to have a bit more dynamic range. Sometimes you want to put more of a focal point on an instrument with more sort of sub bass resonance, you know? Not everything needs to be a major label, triple A, friggin' compressed to hell, sterilized, put in a box experience where it's all the same loudness and is meant to give you a headache. It's like, it just sounds like these tracks may not have been mastered as a part of the same session. And that's not bad. It's just, you know, Secret Lover sounded a lot louder than some of them. So I'm wondering if Secret Lover was added. Like, I know, I know for instance, when I go through DistroKid to upload stuff, uh, you know, to put stuff on the digital streaming platforms, I can take songs I've already done and add it to an existing album as opposed to re-uploading the song again. So I'm wondering if that could have been something that occurred here, but I, I'm not sure. The EQing, the stereo panning, the effects change on the different instruments as well as the vocals, although there wasn't as much on the clean raw vocals in the, lead, in the lead section. But some of those vocal chops or some of the, especially those automated bits with the vocal modulation, we went down an octave or something like that, that obviously had a bit of modulation on it. But you know, like the limiting compression was great. It's just they're, they're, the final time, there just seemed to be a perceived loudness difference between some of the tracks and I could notice it. There's not a problem personally. If, if I was being really anal about it, I might go, well, future releases. And this is totally optional. Again, I'm not saying that what Kevin did was wrong, and I could be full of, full of crap, but if there is a perceived loudness and difference, if for future albums it may be worth mastering them all within the same section and having like an album version. And again, I know that if you've got like Secret Level with 177k, and if that was released as a single, that sucks, because then what you've got to do is like not release that unless it's part of the album, you know? Or you've got to really make that master the album before putting the single out. It sucks, but... Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's, it's alright, look. Effectively, that is my review of Kevin Kowloon's Six Train Uptown. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this review, please do go check out Kevin's uh, various social medias and Spotify page. Stay cool and stay safe, and please also remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time. It's either hell more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world, and I will catch you in the next review. Spider hands out.